control Oh, I'm ready to roll And I've been daydreaming about this night For a long time I wanna dance with you Millennials. For the last time this year. This decade. See you next year. See you next decade. Happy uh, Thursday, everyone. This is our final show of the year. Very sad um, for you guys. Um, I'm looking forward to a break. I'm not going to lie. Um, I've never needed a brachio so badly in my life. You're I was so literally, lucky that your brachio starts now. My brachio starts now. To me, it's a Friday. And I would feel sad for everyone because this is our last show of the year of the decade. But we actually have five more episodes coming at you on Patreon starting tomorrow. Claudia and I have been working on them all week. And yesterday we went really deep. We did an episode of our personal decades and the five fast five biggest milestones of our decades. I, I actually think tears were shed. Like, I saw Theo, he was crying. He was farting, too, which yeah. is, like, his only expression. I actually gave, like, an incredibly sincere and genuine monologue about what it's like to be a dog mom. And I think that anyone who listens to the episode will really relate. Yeah, it really was sincere and genuine, and it was it was quite beautiful. We learned a lot about ourselves this decade. We talk all about it. I don't want to spoil anything. I don't want to spoil, spoil anything. It. But we also have um, a bunch of other episodes, because yes. we did the top... We did the Fast Five stories of the decade. I think we actually did Fast Ten, because there were so many. Yeah, we did like all the pop culture stories of the decade, uh, recapping those. We did another uh, Facebook membership um, episode. And then we also did Logistics Part Two, which is like more about our business and how the toast toasts itself. It's just a robust slate of content, one in which I feel as though when you're hiding from your family on Christmas morning, you will really enjoy. I have to just shake up my um, iced coffee because it's all at the bottom. You see that? Ew. Very gross. Very gross. Well, I'm heading to Chicago right after this, which is why the show is early. Thank you for waking up early. Thank you, Jake. Thanks, everyone. Um, and thanks to everyone watching. You know, I'm heading to Chicago. So We're excited this- to see everyone. Three sold out shows at the Vic Theater. Girl with no job.com. Try to get tickets, but you can't. <laughs> it's 6.30 a.m. Pacific time. Like, if we have any Pacific coasters watching live, like, Jack- Thank you. Literally no one's watching, like for sure, right? There definitely has to be one early bird. On the Pacific Coast? Yes. The Pacific Coast Academy? Yeah, maybe like they work, no, I guess if they do a morning show, then they would be working. They don't watch the competition. Do you remember um, like growing up, all you wanted to do was go to Pacific Coast Academy? Of course. Like Zoe 101 in her convertible driving down Pacific Coast Highway on her way to Pacific Coast Academy? Yeah, that was the life. And like then you met kids who actually went to boarding school and they're like, yeah, it's nothing like Zoe 101? Well, because typical boarding school like isn't PCA. Like to me, just because you went to boarding school doesn't mean you went to PCA. Like, unless you went to Pepperdine, you didn't go to PCA. What's Pepperdine? Pepperdine is a college. It's in um, California. Malibu? Yeah, it's where they filmed uh, Send It On music video, Disney, Friends for Change. Wow, what and a beautiful, beautiful song. And a beautiful campus. And that's PCA to me. Send it on, on and on. Just one spark starts a fire. Okay, we're both singing right lyrics, but different verses. Yes, So no one's wrong. Um, In addition to all that we're going to do today, we are going to recap the trilogy that was Bravo last night. Actually, it wasn't even a trilogy. It was three and a half hours because we had the Real Housewives of all... What was first? New Jersey, just Easter episode, the saddest episode ever. Then we had the Real Housewives of Dallas finale. Then we had the Real Housewives of Orange County Reunion part one. Then we had a housewife from every franchise on the Watch Trappings Live. And honestly, by the end of the night, I was exhausted. My weave was exhausted. <laughs> My panty liner was exhausted. 
Leanne loves a good period joke. Like, you know everything about me? When did I get my period? She just loves to like take everything so far. I'm not even talking about like her comments from last night's episode, which are just like she on dug a grave. Oh my god! And them the way that they edited and did the episode. It, no, the way that they edited it to like show each instance. By the way, I and live... And seeing it all together like that, it, like, really was so upsetting. Yeah. As opposed to seeing it over the course of three episodes, and she says it here, and she says it there, but when it all comes together, and it's like, wow, she really said it so many times in so many ways. Whoever edited that episode last night was on fleek with the flashbacks. Like, even when she was like, oh, I don't remember saying that, and then she owns it to Carrie, she's like, yeah, I said that, and then they flashback to her ten minutes ago saying that she didn't say that. Yeah, it was it was confusing, but no, in general, like, her analogies, like, the the lining on my panty liner is exhausted. Like, it's extreme. It's extreme. <laughs> yeah, so we'll be recapping that. Um, I have many thoughts about, I think of all the things I watched last night, Dallas was the most interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and also the women on Watch Trappin's Live was fascinating, even though they all felt like They were super self-conscious. They couldn't stop looking at themselves in the monitor. Like, no one was looking at Andy. No one was looking at the camera. They were all looking. You can always tell when someone's looking at the monitor because if the camera is at here, they're looking here. Like, it's always a little bit below them. And everyone was just, like, looking at their legs. And honestly, that's what I would do if I was on Watch Trappin's Live also. But it was, like, really distracting. No, there was just, like, no chemistry on the set. None. So, but it was, int- we got sneak peeks of certain things. So of just fine Dallas. I thought they were going to show sneak peeks of everything. They should have. That, that would game be more they played, even though I did go online and vote because I really wanted to see Dallas and we got nothing. The reason why Dallas won is because we got a preview of next week of OC and we got a preview of next week of New Jersey. We didn't get a preview of next week of the first of, part of the of reunion Dallas. of Dallas. So like, and they gave us nothing. Like that no. one second between Cameron and, and Brandy, like that was, that's so irrelevant at this point. So irrelevant. Okay, well, we'll get all into all of that at the end of the show. Because today's show, it is the fast five stories that you need to know this year before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. We are going to re- be recapping the we biggest... We also have a crunch sound that usually Oh goes. my God, sorry. But you, you said it differently than Not usual. Re- so I just I added forgot. this year. Yeah, no, I just forgot. <laughs> it's going to happen. So um, we are going to be recapping the top five stories of things that you needed to know this year, things that shook us. I'm assuming, I don't know because I haven't seen them. I'm assuming, you know, the mysterious disappearance of Jeffrey Epstein is of on course, there. Of course, of um, course. And just things that really shook us this year, recapping. And now, like, taking a, taking a step back, looking back in hindsight, like, what did it mean? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Honestly, I was thinking about it while I put the list together, and it's like, it didn't mean that much, you know? Really? Just, in, you'll see. I I have five stories, obviously, and then I'll have, like, subset A and B, because there were a few more than five things that I felt that we needed to talk about. I understand. Um, but before I let you know what those things were, I th- feel like there's something you want to get off your chest, you feel like you're being burdened by something. You know what? Some things are just, they're better said in song. Ready? Okay. We got that attitude. We got that that attitude. attitude. Today's episode is brought to you by Attitude. If you want to get the best sleep of your life, you've got to try Attitude sheets. They're super different from other sheets. They're feathery soft. Um, I can attest to that seeing as how I have slept with them now for a few months and they've truly changed my life. And also, I had my housekeeper come yesterday and she cleaned them and then put them back on. And like, honestly, there's nothing that compares to clean sheets, especially when you eat in your bed as frequently as I do. Like, you've got to wash your sheets and I really don't. No, the... The joy of fresh sheets, it's just the small joys in life. And when yes. they're Attitude sheets, the joys are even larger. The best part about Attitude, at least for me, is that they have cooling technology. It's made of organic, clean bamboo. It's extremely breathable, and it regulates your temperature to improve your quality of sleep. I talk about once an episode how I wake up with a sweaty neck, like, all the time when I'm sleeping. But thanks to my Attitude sheets, I have severely calmed down, and now I don't have, like, frizzy hair at the back of my neck because I wasn't sweating all night. It's also antimicrobial. Some customers have claimed that their skin's appearance has, has improved after switching to Attitude sheets. Read the reviews and see for yourself. Also very true. People don't really realize like not washing your sheets or your towels like and then washing your face with the towel or like sleeping on dirty sheets can contribute to like adult acne um their organic clean bamboo is recycles 98 percent of the water that it uses so it's the most sustainable bedding available cotton uses a ton of pesticides and wastewater and is very harmful on the environment if you want to give the gift that a recipient will love and future generations will thank you for give the gift of attitude we got that attitude. The amazing sheets have a 30-day risk-free trial. If you're not fully satisfied, you can return your sheets for a full refund. They even cover shipping on returns. Um, this is bedding for the educated, conscious customer. It's 100% organic. Um, attitude sheets, they're soft as silk, breathable as linen, but at the price of cotton. You or that special someone you buy them for are going to love them. And right now, our listeners will get 20% off their sheet set and free shipping. Just text TOAST to 64000. The only way to get the 20% off your set of attitude sheets and the free shipping is to text TOAST T-O-A-S-T to 64000. Again, text T-O-A-S-T to 64000. Sign on. Sleep amazing. All right, let's jump right in. What is the first story that really shook us this decade? The first story in no particular order. Wait, where's your iPad? I I don't need my iPad. Why? Because it's not like the... It's not an actual news story. It's just like a recap. Yeah, so it's like we've... 
covered these stories, you know the facts. It's just like your iPad looks so small. I just brought it just in case I needed to research something. Yeah. But it's really just a note on my phone today's episode. So crazy. Um, the first story, in no particular order, perhaps chronological but not even, the college admission scandal is True. the story of the year. Very controversial. And you know what's so crazy? And I'm sure this is the case with a lot of the stories of the year because they were the stories of the year. Like, it's still ongoing, you know? Yes. Well, not for Felicity Huffman, actually. She is she can sleep at night knowing she paid her time for the crime that she did, and she can move on with her life. But like for many of the people involved, it is still an ongoing legal issue and, a, and an ongoing trial. Yes, yeah, so we don't have that many answers, um, except for Felicity Huffman. I'm, I'm very happy for her, know that I am, that it's over for her. It you was know, also... Like, she um, can put this behind her in this decade and move on to the next decade. And it really was the story of the year, but it was really divisive. It was such a controversial topic, and I feel like it's going to be something that is really spoken about at people's like holiday dinners, because so many people are on different sides of it. Like so many people think it's like you know the embodiment of privilege and it's you know so wrong and then some people are like it's not that big of a deal it's like what parents do for their kids right and I feel like I've been on the roller coaster of emotions thinking like it is a big deal it's not a big deal like when I first found out I'm like okay who cares I thought rich people like always bought their way into college I didn't even realize it was illegal and then like the more you learn about it like my my opinion on it has developed over time um and I just know like I can see people fighting about this did you watch the SNL skit um of people fighting at their holiday dinners yes so funny really funny I enjoyed it good stuff um yeah just like you know just this is the epitome of justice. Is it? Well, um, hopefully. Depends who you ask. Right. Well, Felicity Huffman, I feel like justice was, I mean, it was a slap on the wrist, but she went, she did the, she paid the time. I don't think it was a slap on the wrist. I think it was, that was like the max, like, she went to jail for two weeks for getting her kid into college. Well, yeah, but if you like look at what other people who aren't famous have like gone prison time for the same crime, yes, I know, but it's I'm just considered saying, a slap on the wrist. I'm saying judging it, uh, on its own, not comparing to other things. Just like... Oh, does the punishment fit the crime? <laughs> for me, yes. But in the grand scheme of the world, like as it relates to people who have like been sentenced to five years for like doing something similar, it does seem unfair and like a slap on the wrist. But yeah, I guess. Okay, next up, speaking of justice, Justice Smollett. Oh my God, I can't believe that was this year. Yes. Jusse Smollett. The case of Mussy Smollett. <laughs> um, really took the world by storm this year. Let's let's walk through it because what happened was it was announced. How was it announced? I think he actually tweeted that he was attacked, or it was the police. Like you file a police report, right. it becomes public. It became knowledge. such a big story. Like every celebrity in the world was, you know, um, wishing him well, speaking out. He claimed that two two men. Yeah. Did you say they were white men? Yes. Okay, two white men came and attacked him and said, this is MAGA country, and like poured acid on him and put a noose around his neck. And like when we heard that, like, oh my God, like acid and noose, that is like some biblical shit. Like that is so, and it was really pit inducing. And I think it took the world by storm in the way that it did because the details were so specific and so horrible. Like who could even so dream horrible. up? So horrible. Who could dream up? Something so evil. Well, I'll tell you who can. Musty Smollett. Because then, and you know what was so weird was like all the details weren't adding up, but nobody was going to be the first person to be like, Loki, like I feel like this isn't true because it was so terrible. And if you were wrong in doubting him, like you're an asshole. 1,000%. But was anybody saying that even before there was evidence? Any shred of evidence, like no one would hear that story and be like, "I don't, be I don't." I mean, well, well, I truly don't believe it. Well, if you listen to Dave Chappelle's special, he didn't really believe it because he said, "Who gets Subway sandwich at two in the morning in the winter in Chicago? It's like freezing, you know." So, no. Okay, but maybe part, that could have meant he wasn't really going to Subway. Like, maybe that part was wasn't true. The best. Yes, for the most part, everyone believed him. I don't know. Remember what it was that caused like the spiral of people not believing him, but. It, and the security footage of two people buying acid and a noose, and they were uh, Nigerian. Then, um, the fake check. Oh, my God. That, by the way, of all the things like that happened in the Musse Smollier case, I would have to say the most um, interesting and hilarious one is the check. It's like, you're going to be illegal, and you're putting it in writing. Yeah. Like, pay cash. You're on a network show. Go to the ATM, bro. And then also, like the police, like the police were doing their jobs, and they were realizing that this story didn't really add. Right, and you know that's like the whole, um, like the greatest, the worst thing that came out of this was like the, the waste of police time and resources. And that's what we were talking about yesterday about like the girl who like faked her Amber Alert. Um, like, where's the punishment for that? You know, and there should be. There should be. But they they were building a case against him, and then like mysteriously dropped it. Yeah. Mysterious as hell. Very mysterious. Very just as mysterious as maybe um, Our the next Jeffrey story. Epstein. Oh yeah, the the death of Jeffrey Epstein. Well, I, I excuse was, me. The 
death. Well, no, I think he's dead. Some people could say he's not. So I'm just for safety, the alleged death. Okay. Of Jeffrey Epstein. The alleged death of Jeffrey Epstein, but also the whole year of Jeffrey Epstein, because first it was he was being brought to justice. Right. And that was such a great time. We were so naive back then. Oh my then. God. We had everything was on the horizon for us. Everything. You know, people were going to be taken down, justice was going to be served. And then on one warm summer's night, a foul swoop. One foul swoop. It's over. It's over. I cannot believe I, I remember I was drunk when I found out that Jeffrey Epstein was murdered and I just remember being so like enraged and like it's not possible you know yeah it's like a dream yeah no it's like let's go back in time but again I'm so proud of us as a culture for not believing it you know it's like and we're not letting it go either no. which I'm loving you there was actually a breaking news in this story yesterday was that the sur- surveillance footage outside Jeffrey Epstein's cell um that was being used as evidence in some some trial has mysteriously disappeared yes the prosecutors claim they can no longer find it yeah from his suicide attempt his first one ah the surveillance footage from that so yes the story continues to enrage America they keep trying to pretend like we're dumb and I'm glad that we're not letting this go and even though I find the memes and the jokes and the stupid fiction pictures on Instagram and the tweets to like really start to like annoy me now like mm-hmm. Epstein this ornament didn't hang itself like it's just it's not funny anymore but we can't let the narrative stop so I'm not angry about it yeah. I'm just like I'm low-key subtly rolling my eyes but I ain't yeah mad. like you don't have to keep tagging me in every meme um please Stop. Stop tagging me in memes and giveaways, please. What is with the giveaways? Okay, I know it's not a story, but this was the year of the Instagram giveaways. No, it's it's out of control. And now what I've been doing is anytime I get tagged in a giveaway and I'm silly enough to click on the tag and then I scroll all the way up the caption to see that it was initially a giveaway, I reply to the person who tagged me with a question mark. <laughs> and then some, like literally one person responded. They're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I just wanted to win. And I, you were the first person I could think of. Well, that's sweet. No, and then I was like, okay, girl, let's win this giveaway. <laughs> but it wasn't a good giveaway. By the way, and I can't I believe. Even look. Wait, the best part is out of all the giveaways I've been tagged in this year, I haven't won one. Right. Deeply upsetting. Seems like the odds are stacked against me. Right. Like, because you have been in so many giveaways. No, no, so many giveaways. And because I'm between Instagram accounts, every time I log into Club and the Job, it's like, you and tagged in 75 comments. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going viral. (laughs) No. Then I'm like, these people must have seen my TikToks. No. At Club with No Job, Girl with No Job, The Morning Toast, Jackie O. Enter to win this free Instagram. I'm always getting tagged in, like, win a Polaroid camera. Or this ornament didn't hang itself. Or it's like Target having a toasty water bottle. (laughs) Uh, But you know what? Keep tagging me in those. I actually really appreciate it. It gives us good inspo for our merch. It definitely does. Okay, (laughs) our next story, I'm going to do subset A and B because I know the first part you don't want to talk about. And I just have to mention it. Oh, my God. Is it Chloe and Tristan? Of course. And Jordan Woods. That was the biggest fucking story. Red Table Talk. That was, and so that's subset A of Love Triangles. Wait, we also never spoke about how a recent update to that story is that she went on Red Table Talk again and took a polygraph test. That is from the first time she went on Red Table Talk, um, but they just released it for some reason. Wow, they did her dirty because she looked so fucking thirsty going back to Red Table Talk. Wow, if I were her, I'd be actually upset at Jada Pinkett Smith. Yeah, and also like they weren't asking the pertinent questions, like nobody thought that they had sex. Literally never, because in the timeline of things, there was no time for sex. No, and that was never the the question, the uh, accusation. The accusation was, did you not tell Chloe first before I came out of the news, and did you not even apologize to her ever? Right, and did you kiss him, which you said that you had done? Right. And, and to like, me, it's like, that's all I need to know. You kissed your best friend's... Man. Baby sister's daddy. man. Okay. Goodbye. The most important... Goodbye. What the, goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye. You know what they really should have asked her that they didn't ask, and I think is the most pertinent question? Was their tongue. That changes things. Yeah. And I feel as though there was tongue, but when she said to Jada Pinkett Smith, it was really like a peck. And you, nobody pecks like these days. I like I don't even peck my husband. Like, what's the point? Right. Like, honestly, I, I don't even peck Theo. Like, we fully make out. <laughs> There's Watch tongue what you involved. say, shadow band. I don't care. I'm proud. <laughs> Okay, we don't need to spend that much time talking about it because we already it, have. And it was such a tumultuous time. And we also have other segments of this show that aren't just the stories of the year because, like, honestly, they're the stories of the year, which means we talked about them to death, which means we really don't want to talk about them anymore, but we're just going to recap it for you so you know where we stand in 2019. Yeah, but we have a lot of other things to do. We do. Um, next up, some happy news, Royal Baby Archie. Oh, really? You were con- Is this the fifth or fourth? Um, this is the fourth. Really? I don't know if I would consider this... Did they get married this year? No. Mm. 
I don't know. A royal baby, and when it's Meghan and Harry's baby, that is big fucking news. And for some reason, we didn't, like, consider it big news on this show. Like, we talked about it like we talked about any other story, just because it feels like we were always talking about them. But, like, ba- and the name Archie is the best royal name I've ever heard in my life. Whenever I think Archie, I know I think, I should think Riverdale, but I think Shannon Bedore's dog. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's such a cute name for her dog. It is a cute name for He's her like dog. He's, like, this beautiful golden retriever, and his name is Archie, and he just, like, lives this fabulous li- life in Newport. Yeah, and it's a great name for a royal, and it's a great name for your favorite teen drama. It's a great name for a royal because I think his real name is Archibald, which is a great royal name. Yes. Very historic, but then he's like a cool kid at school. Archie! Archie. Throw me, hey, Archie, I'm open. Throw me the ball. Yeah. Hey, Archie, go fuck yourself, you know? I love the name Archie. It's cute. I mean, you have red hair. Like, you actually should consider Archie Yeah. to be the name for a child. I know, but is that, like, a little too on the nose? No. Like, then he's really, like, the comic book character. Honestly, when you think of, this is totally random, but when you think of, like, naming your family and whatever, like, it really is a branding thing. Of course. Then look at uh, Brandy Redmond and Brian. Okay, well, I was going to take it to a higher level. Like, even she didn't realize what she was doing back then, but, like, when she was giving birth, Kris Jenner was building a brand. And hearing her talk about how she came up with the names Kendall and Kylie on the most on the season finale was so interesting because she was like, you don't just think, like, oh, Kylie Jenner is a good name, Kelly Jenner. She was thinking of it as Kendall and Kylie, which ended up being a huge brand. Like, she was a fucking genius 30 yeah. years ago. Yeah. And the way that she not only, like, obviously gave all of her names, her kids' names with K because the last name was also K, when it came time for Jenner, like, you'd think she would be over it. No, she was still building a brand. Yeah. And she continued on with the Ks and then came up with a dynamic duo, Kendall and Kylie. Like, she is just watching her just, like, subtly explain how she, like, became the marketing genius that she was, like, at the young age, just, like, being a young mom, still thinking of, like, the branding of it all. Same with Brandy, Bruin, Brian, Brooklyn, and... Bronwyn. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the well-behaved kid's name who, like, wasn't... Brinkley. St- Brinkley. Yes. That's actually really cute. Actually, I know we are going to talk about it in a minute, but, like, that party was so sweet. That party was so sweet, and I know that, like, Brandy Redman is no Kris Jenner, but, like, she's well on her way. She's well on her way to building a brand of Bruin, Brinkley, Brooklyn, Brian, and Brandy. Yes. <laughs> Brian, Brooklyn, Br- <laughs> Br- <laughs> Brandy, Br- Brian, Brooklyn, Berkeley, and Bruin. No, 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 but you have to go in order. I know. No, I did. Brian, Brandy, Brooklyn, <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Brandy, Brian, Brooklyn, Brinkley, Bruin. Great. Done. Great. Wow. Nailed it. Great. Okay. By the way, would you ever do that? I mean, but you and Zach have totally different... No, but I have some plans for, like, a thematic situation for my kids because you yeah. know I'm always in theme. Me too. I actually plan on having four kids, and regardless of their gender, they're going to be winter, spring, summer, and fall. That's horrendous. <laughs> I know. I bet there's a family out there. Of course. You know something funny? One of my friends growing up, Rachel, um, everyone in her family had names that started with J, and then they just <laughs> randomly named her Rachel. That's weird. Like Jenny, Josh, Jessica, Rachel. (laughs) Weird. Yeah, it's like you were on track with the branding. There's so much that goes into it. Yeah. And I love when you really think about it um, from from a marketing perspective. Yes. Now I have to incorporate that into my name list. Yeah. I have no ideas thematically. I have a, a few thematic ideas, but then it's really limiting. Right. And then gender. Right. You could have like two boys and two girls names and then come out with six girls. Right. But these days, like gender... Gender is fluid and gender names, names are fluid. That's true. You know? Like, do you consider the name Blake a boy or a girl's name? Could be either. I can, mm, no, it's so either. What about Dylan? So either. Right. Sam? Girl. Just because my friend Sam is a girl. Yeah. And what's a full, a Taylor. Sammy, Samuel? Taylor is a girl's name. Yeah. Like, besides for Taylor Lautner. The real Taylor Lautner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready for our fifth and final? And it's a subset A and B? Wait. Oh, I'm a- sorry, I forgot subset B for story three. Oh, God, okay. It was about love triangles. And for me, like, I know this probably doesn't rank so high for every. I'm sure it does, actually. But I feel like it really took this show by storm. Let me think, a love triangle? Mm-hmm. Not really a love triangle, I just was trying to position it so it could be Brad a subset Brad and Jen, B. Jen? No. What is it? Tyler C, Gigi Hadid. Oh, I agree that that is one of the biggest stories of the of this. Like the that war, was the story the that really shook me the most to my core, made me question everything that I thought that I knew. And that is a defining quality of a story of the year. And what was really so impactful about it was that it was the merging of many different themes, worlds, networks, and that's why it really was so shook worthy because it was just everything you thought you knew about reality television, celebrity Hollywood, and models like was completely debunked. Yeah. It was just a crazy, crazy time. That really was. And it's so weird that, like, we're not in that time anymore. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I miss it. I really do. No, I do, too. We didn't even know what we had because we were so confused. No, I think we really knew what we had, and we just, like, couldn't believe it was happening. It was too good to be true. Yeah. You know? 
too good to be true. So now I hope that Tyler C and Stassi baby like, are gonna make sweet. Love. I didn't even have time to ship them because I was so busy like being confused and like kind of hurt. And then they broke up and just in time for me to realize that I actually do but, ship. No, just in time, you just got ready, you know? Yeah. You were prepared. My ship was coming in. Right, it's just, it sucks when that happens. Fifth and final story now. By the way, this is the fifth and final story of the year. We'll never say this again in 2019. I hate when people like of the year is like, oh my god, this is my last bowl of cereal for the year. That's so, me. Oh, I was gonna say, that's literally what I'm doing today. Oh, that's what I do all the yeah, time. It's like, I'm like, Ben, like, this is our last night sleeping together in 2019. I guess I'll sleep with you next year. Yeah. Oh, and they're like leaving. By the way, when I leave here today, I'm gonna, like, bye. See you next year. See you next decade. Yeah. Well, this, this time it means even more. Yes, for sure. Fifth and final story are feuds of the year. Okay, wow. The first one, Taylor Swift, Scooter Braun. Wow, and that really happened in the latter half of the year, it but it's still, it. it shaped it. It's causing, you know, tons of conversations about musicians and ownership and, and copyright. Um, in addition, you know, what it means to be a woman in music. So thoughtful conversations being had, even though, you know, a feud is what, like a seemingly simple, you know, feud is what started it. Really meaningful and impactful conversations are being had in our culture. Yes, I agree. And also, everyone's got to take sides. Do they? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's the making of a best feud. By the way, that, not even pertaining to this issue, but like just that phrase, everyone's got to take sides, those four words like give me terrible anxiety. No, because that's, we can't do that on the show. I don't take sides. And like, you know what? And like, even if we can take a side, we might in a few years like, see it differently and then just like regret everything that we said. 1,000%. And yeah. I don't want to ever be on the wrong side of history. And honestly, like there's a 50% chance anytime you take a side that you're going to be on the wrong side of history. So if you never take a side, you're never on the wrong side. But if you never take a side, like are you, for our purposes, are you interesting? Right. It's like who wants to watch a it's show like, about a bunch of people who can't make a decision? In Howard Stern's book, he says like the, the key to being a great radio show host is to have really firm opinions on everything. Doesn't matter if you're right or wrong, you just gotta stick with those opinions. Shook, oh my God, I and feel like, like we're we doing do the opposite. We do the opposite, but it seems to be working. Are we failures? I don't know, but I think about that all the time. It's like, doesn't matter what it is, you just have to ride it out. Fuck no, I'm like such a bandwagoner. About, it's like if I'm if I have a, a feeling and I, I'll like go all in on my feeling and like yell about this one thing and then I turn out to be wrong, like I'm hopping off that ship and like getting on the right, the yeah. right one. And then I think about how all of my favorite current housewives are people who at one point were my least favorite. Like I was literally signing petitions Dorit. to get them off. Dorit, Cameron Westcott, yep. Kelly Dodd, yep. Margaret Josephs. Yep. Yes. Oh my God, you're right. Mm -hmm. Those are my favorite housewives right now. Right. And so when I look back on some like the things that we used to like recap, even on the breath, I like don't even just agree with anything I used to think. Yeah. I'm like, who are these morons? Who gave them the show? <laughs> no, totally. So it's like, why would I now... I'm now I'm being considerate of my future self. I don't want her to look back on me right now and be like, that moron was on the wrong side of the Scooter Braun Taylor Swift drama. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Even though I know I'm on the right side, but you know what I mean. What's the side that you're on? Um, I'm firmly like in the middle, you know, leaning more towards Taylor Swift. Okay. And I'm... And you know, sorry, you know, I'm on Taylor's side. Like, for the, yeah, I am. Um, I, I believe her. Yeah, and also she's your girl. So even if she's wrong, like, you have to ride with your girl. Yeah, but... For, for the level of she, girl that she is for you. Like, for me, if Kim was in a feud, and even if, like, I thought she was wrong, I'm on Kim's side. I don't give a shit. Yeah, but then I also feel like that's really, like, toxic stan culture. Like, even if you don't agree with someone, just, like, blindly defending them and, like, attacking people on Twitter who disagree with you. You can blindly defend them and not attack anyone. That's so true. You know? Oh, my God. You know? Wow. You know. Say that again? You can blindly defend someone even in, in, in a way that might, some might deem unhealthy. And you don't have to attack anyone please, with your blind defense. Someone make me a quote card, please. Like, I literally put that on my tombstone. It's so true. So you can blindly defend Taylor Swift all you want. Just don't come for people who might be right about what they're saying about her. And you know what? I feel like that's very pertinent um, that we should just briefly mention Camila Cabello. Like, if you were wanting, like, her harmonizers or whatever are fucking nuts on Twitter. And it's like, fine, you want to defend someone's indefensible actions? Like, that's fine. But you don't have to go attacking people who were, like, offended by what she posted, you know? Right. Like, but also it goes both ways. Yeah. No, everyone can have an opinion without, like, hating each other. I know that's, like, a foreign concept here in 2019, but, like, I'm firmly, like, that is my resolution in 2019. Or not even a resolution, because I feel like I do a good job of that. But my hope for 2019 is that as a culture, we can learn to have more meaningful disagreements. Yes. And not just go below the belt. It's very Real Housewives. Like, mm -hmm. you can disagree with someone without calling them a pig face, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Also, I just want to say. Or saying that they threw their mother down the I stairs. I just want to say about being blindly loyal. Like, Kim might do, I stand Kim, I ride or die, I think she's so smart, and 
I agree with everything that she does. So if she did something that I personally disagree with, it's like, I trust that she did the right thing for herself. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, maybe from the way I'm seeing it, it doesn't look that way, but like, what I but trust- we don't know everything. Right, and I trust all the decisions that she makes otherwise, so I'm gonna trust this next one too. I feel like that is a very smart way of looking at Stan culture, but so much of Stan culture is like younger people who just aren't at that level of maturity yet. Yeah, but I think sometimes their naivete is, it's like ignorance is bliss, you know? Like, you're, they're just gonna ride for their person, and that's that's just loyalty, which is a good quality to have as a human being. Not blind loyalty, though. Not blind. Because that's almost like you could bring it back to Housewives, like, Cameron, for the last two years, has been blindly loyal to Leanne. She's been loyal. She's been loyal. But even when, when Leanne has been problematic, like, she hasn't taken up for uh, on Leanne. Like, in what, when should she have taken up against Leanne before? Like, just even acknowledging things that she's doing wrong, you know what I mean? But maybe she didn't think she was doing something necessarily that wrong. Isn't that blind loyalty? No, she agrees with her. I don't see, Until, how, Cam I don't like, see how Cameron Westcott could agree with some of the things but, Leanne Locke no, has like, done And now she doesn't agree with her, and she's, she's letting her know. Okay, maybe that wasn't the greatest example, but you know what I'm saying. Interesting. Okay, and then the second feud of the year was James Charles, Tati Westbrook. Oh my God. Oh, and I listened to a majority when I was getting my nails done of the um, podcast podcast with Trisha Paytas and Jeffree Star, and it was just so good. Jeffrey at one point, um, like, smokes a joint and then really opens up, like, just about everything in his life, like, about Nate. About, he's like, and he, it's so crazy how he's so aware of, like, what people say about him, and he really doesn't let him bother him. Because, like, even people I know who, like, I know, like, on a personal level, and I'm like, by the way, like, you're a Jeffree Star fan, and they're like, yeah, and we just, like, talk so much. Everyone, like, apparently has something to say about Nate, about how he's gay for pay, and just, like, is with Jeffree for the money, and is, like, likes women, um, and was, like, DMing with people, like, to have sex with girls, and Jeffree, like, was so open about all that, just being, like, of course, like, it used to bother me, but, like, it bothers, I'm sure it bothers Nate, and, like, he just knows, like, even the worst things that people say about him, and he, like, doesn't let it bother him whatsoever. It's actually so crazy. That's crazy, I wanna to listen to and it. And like what they say about like people he cares about is like so vile, like saying that your boyfriend doesn't like you, actually likes women and is in, you, in it for the money. Like even though like they've been together for three years before Jeffrey was really that rich. Yeah, but it's like, if, if things are good and your life is good and you have a boyfriend that loves right. you, it's like who, it, 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 it matters not at all not what at people all. say. That's true. You know? Yeah, and, I, I, and it sounds so like stupid, but like at, at some point it is just jealousy. Like, yeah. who wouldn't be jealous of Jeffree Star? And it's also just, like, this fascination. Like, people are just obsessed with, like, scandals. I mean, we do the show every day. Like, they, it makes the world go round. Right. Um, but people are just fascinated with taking other people down. Even if they're not actively, like, doing it and writing the tweets, they're just like, oh, my God, what is everyone saying? Like, let's right. get the tea. Engaging. Yeah. Yeah, it was a really good podcast episode. I have, I have like, 20 more minutes. Um, it was really long, like, well over an hour. Oh, I think I'll listen to it today because I'm doing um, NDO with my favorite nephew. Yes, Nephew's Day Out. Nephew's Day Out, and I think I'm going to take him for a little Manny Petty. Ooh, um, he's very, if, as long as the nail place, like, isn't super busy and there's, like, a pedicure chair he can relax on, like, he will sleep. He's actually, like, we were just talking about because it's the last day of the year, and, um, Someone was like, did you bring Theo today? And I'm like, oh no. And we were just talking about how like when Theo used to come to the show and he hasn't been here in a while, but like he's really, this year was also like, I know it's not a story, like it was the year of Theo like maturing. It really was like from the beginning of the year and like the way he was behaving on the show, just like kind of like cries for attention. Yeah, just like eating every piece of dirt that like rolled his way. Right, and now he's just like, he can't be bothered with all of that, you know? No, he's so calm, so collected, so cool, like so everything. Like he's, yeah. he's the boy, he's the boy all the girls want and all the boys want to be. I think that he's like really just found himself this year. You know? Yeah, emotionally, spiritually, but also physically. Yes, definitely. Okay, uh, James Charles Tati Westbrook was the fifth oh, yeah. point. Um, where did we land? I actually landed in because a very that was weird like a ping place. Ping pong match. I was like, boom, boom. I'm Tati's side. I'm oh, James's side. I was way, so fucking invested. And that's exactly what Trisha Paytas said. She was like, scandals are so weird because you always believe the person that you're listening to. Because even with the Tati James stuff, it's like everyone saw the Tati video and was like, Tati, Tati, unfollow James, unfollow James, unfollow James. Then James released his very compelling video and everyone pretty much went back to James and unfollowed Tati. So it's like we never really decided where we landed. I feel like in the drama, I really landed on Team James. The whole thing was really weird and like a very uncharacteristic thing for Tati to do. And I totally like understood 
everything she accused James of, he had an explanation for. And like, it didn't seem like it was excuses. Like I kind of understood it. And I understood like how someone could get annoyed with the 16 year old kid who got really famous and probably became a little bit of an asshole, but that's not a crime. Like, sorry, I'm not going to cancel you because like you're letting your celebrity get to your head. Like you're human. That happens to everyone. Um, but, and, and I was such a big James Charles fan, but since that scandal, and I don't know if it has anything to do with the scandal or maybe I'm just like evolving in my taste. Like I'm just kind of over J James. Yeah. So I don't know if that means I didn't take his side because in the, in the scandal I did, I, I believed him and I didn't subscribe to Tati. And I actually like in the whole scandal, like I really don't like Tati. Like I actually think what she did was like super lame of her and like really immature and started this whole like cover diava and then she like deleted the video and was like I didn't mean to do this but it's like you did mean to do it so like if you're gonna do something stick with it you know yeah I think it's like in looking back I wasn't a fan of anyone I didn't even really follow these people until these videos and then I became once James said his piece like I became a big fan of his but then it's all about what you do next and he took some time off and then came back in like a kind of a, not a small Quiet. way but just in the same business as usual sort of way and there was just like nothing, there was no next next. Do you know what I mean? But what and should I'm, there have been? I don't know, just like a, I don't know. It's because kind of how the end I feel of the day, about, he didn't do anything wrong. So like, what would he have had to apologize no, for? No, not apologize. I'm not, I don't, I don't need an apology, but like, what was, I don't, what was even his first video back? Do you know? It was know? just a, like a regular YouTube. It wasn't anything. He's, he's just been back to his like same old content. Yeah, I don't know. It just like, maybe because I never watched it before when it, you know, I just was only a part of the... Yeah. I just, like, I, like, was involved, and that's why when he came for... When Tati came for him, like, I was fully on Tati's side. I was like, oh, my God, this little shit. And then he totally explained himself, and he took that break just because there was so much going on and, like, people talking about him. But at the end of the day, he didn't need a break. Like, he didn't do anything wrong, yeah. you know? So the fact that he just came back business as usual is what he should have come back as. He got attacked for seemingly doing nothing, for just being, like, yeah. a, a menace at a restaurant. Right, like, so I think things are going well for him. And I, I'm... It's probably just because I didn't watch his videos before that it's like after. Yeah. But so that's kind of how I'm feeling having watched Olivia Jade's newest video. Uh huh. Where it's like she took a really long break as she needed to, but now she's back. And Business as usual. Is this video? I didn't and I didn't watch her stuff before, before the scandal. Really. Yeah. I had seen like one or two videos. Okay, I've seen her but stuff so like before. This video that she just made, this makeup tutorial, yeah. is it like the same caliber of what she used to do? Um. It's a little less, it's more simple. I think she used to be uh, way more effervescent and like carefree on her channel. She's very much in her own head now because when you go through something so publicly, like now every time you say something, you think of like the different ways it can be interpreted. So she's definitely more reserved. She's not letting people in as much. She like, she used to take her camera all around her house and her bathroom and show her mom and her sister. And now it's like she just sat and straight did her makeup, which wasn't unusual for her, but her, and maybe she'll continue to do more in depth. But I just felt like she's, there's definitely like, a, a wall up now yeah of things and things she won't do things she won't say and places she won't let us in yeah physically and emotionally because she can't she can't and, and it's also, like I don't even want her to talk I'm, about the legal stuff and she can't yeah legally she can't talk about it and I do, also like don't want to hear about it because it's like it's it's kind of like with the the Judices it's like it's painful right but like I don't know it feels like there's a, something missing yeah, it, it just feels like she's changed. And I think going through something incredibly public uh, will change a person. So this is the new Olivia Jade. Got it. Okay, now before we get into recaps of TV shows, TV shows I want to go through the top three toast moments of the year. And I will let you do that, but not before letting you know that the top three toast moments of the year is brought to you by Best Fiends Stars. Bright and explosive new puzzle game with snappy and colorful graphics. Best Fiend Stars is a casual game that anyone can play, but it's made for adults. You can spend as much time or as little time as you'd like in the game. The best part of the game that you must know is two important things. It doesn't require internet. So if you're on a plane, you're on the subway, you're on a train, you know, you ran out of data for the month, you can still play Best Fiend Stars without internet. Two, the best part is that it's free to download. So you don't gotta go spending coin just to have a good that time. That is so pertinent to the situation being able to play without Wi-Fi. It is a snappy, quick, and rewarding experience. You smash your way through puzzles with super fun explosions and collect tons of cute characters along the way. Best Fiend Stars updates the game monthly with new levels, events, and or characters so it never gets old. Best Fiend Stars treats the game like a service for their players. No internet required to play, so it is great for traveling, playing subway, board at work, etc. But if you're bored at work, watch a toast and then play Best Fiend Stars. Yes. Um, they have a fun uh, little tool called Boosters. It's like a mechanic that players can collect to help beat levels. You can engage with other players by joining a team 
where teammates help each other and even compete against other teams. You can match and blast your way through explosive puzzles and collect tons of cute characters. There's even a fun social feature that allows you to team up with friends or family. Download Best Fiend Stars for free on the Apple Store today or Google Play. So again, that's Best Fiends Stars for free on the Apple Store or Google Play. Check it out and enjoy. Maybe when you're avoiding your family at Christmas, you can just lock yourself in the bathroom and play a game on your phone. Best Fiend Stars for free. Get connected. Okay. okay. Top, what was the thing? Oh, top three toast moments of the year. I have them, if you want to know what they are. Oh, so you came up with them. I did. Okay, cool. Because yeah. I think that they're all encompassing. You know what? I trust you, sis. That's been, that's what I've learned this year. It's just like, never doubt Jackie, because she's usually right about stuff. So, our, and these are in our particular order, from, from. Three, two, one? Three, two, one. Okay. Third best moment of the toast this Wait, year. Let me think, 2019 to 2020. So we picked up 2019. Okay, we've been doing the show for like nine months, like we were in a groove. Okay. Yeah. Third best moment was the exclusive performance of Toast that we received um, the day that the song came out and the speaker died, but our spirits did not. Our spirits can never die, honestly, and I, if you're ever feeling down, or at least this works for me, like, I just go back and watch that video, and, like, I'm different after watching that it video. It kills me. It kills me. It was the funniest thing we ever did. It was so last minute, but, like, obviously we're, like, obviously we're going to perform on our own show, and we, it was just, it was brilliant, like, and I, I love everything about that, and, like, that is something I will cherish for the rest of my no, life. And it's, like, thank God the speaker died. Otherwise, what are we doing? We're going to go the whole song? No, not only that, it's, like, okay, there's nothing funny or interesting about this performance, Any, you know? Anymore. Like, it was funny that we did it, but, like. Hips. Good Hips. stuff. Okay. Second best moment of the toast this year, the Jonas Brothers. When they came on our show. Oh my God, I was like, did I miss something? <laughs> yes, oh my God, Halloween is always a staple here at the Morning Toast, mm -hmm. but having three prestigious guests who are so handsome join right. us it was just everything. Like that little clip of the video that they did for us before we went live. That was really nice of them to come all the way out to our studio while they were on tour, like they flew the jet, they landed right outside and just... Not only did they show up, they posted premium content on our Instagram, and I will forever be grateful. Like, that video makes me laugh every single me time. Too. And it's like, you have to spend the video watching a different one of us every each time. time. I think you truly are the funniest, like, with your little yellow head. Like, oh, yeah. It's so funny. Like, all jokes aside, I love our Halloween episodes. And every year we do Halloween, we come up with an idea, and I'm like, damn, it's not going to be as good as the year before because there's so much pressure. And I'm sure I'll feel that way next year, too. But we started out with just, like, us doing each other. And to be honest, I was like, we will never do anything as funny. Then we did Kim and Courtney and Chris. And, like, honestly, it was kind of like a like a basic idea, but we did it you so well. You were not into it I was before. not into it. I just thought it was too easy, and it's, like, not that funny. Yeah, like, everyone dresses up as the Kardashians. Right, but I think, A, we all looked really good as the Kardashians and be like the role playing and there was that was such a hot time for Kardashians it was like the lunatic episodes yeah. like um Courtney and Kim were fighting so much and we were Courtney and Kim it was perfect but really what brought it home was the Chris Cam of and course Chris snitch Jenner and then this year I was like damn okay I thought we couldn't top last year I thought we couldn't top the year before so we definitely can't top it this year and Jonas Brothers was just so funny and so pertinent and they also have like an interesting dynamic that we got to play yeah. on when we were being like role playing and it was just it was excellent I love Halloween I love Halloween if you ever want to laugh also go watch that video I, my favorite person to watch is Margot because knowing she was sick she had and, strep throat she no, was miserable like, her being sick like made her more Kevin because quiet <laughs> yeah and it was just so cute okay and the number one toast moment of the year can we get a drum roll from you? Closed on Sunday. Yes, oh my God, two musical performances in our top three, and maybe I'm thinking we should perform musically more often. I agree, and I chose Closed on Sunday as number one because it was an iconic moment, like we brought a piano to our show, Snitch like played the claps, yep. and you sung an unreleased Kanye West song, and like, what? No, it's also, so. Also, the so, fact that like Kanye reached said out you sheet music for a song that hadn't been released yet, like, is the craziest thing of all time. No, literally, there's so many parts of it that are so epic. I think what we ended up creating content-wise was brilliant and great for views and tons of clicks. But like the meaning behind it, like the fact that we got reached out to by someone with an email account at Yeezy.com. Like, right. I just. I don't know if I will ever get over that. Like, the recognition is truly gift enough. And then also the sneakers were a great gift also. Right. And also, they had sent the song to, like, a few different people. Like, I saw Charlie Puth. Got, I saw that, too. But they sent some of the songs on the album. Everyone got a different song. Like, the fact that we got close on Sunday, which is one of the more iconic songs from the album. And is gonna. it was, like, the biggest moment on the internet. Like, when people when their album was re released, everyone was like... Chick-fil-A. And then he also is the only song he released a music video for. Right. Like, it was an important special song. So it's song. like, not only did he give us one of his songs, like, he gave us the biggest song, like, and bigger than Charlie Puth's. Crazy. Crazy. Should we, uh... <clears throat> 
No more living for the culture, we nobody slave. Mm, 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 Stand mm. up for my home. Even if I take this walk alone, I bow down to the king upon the throne. My life is his, I'm no longer my own. Nah, back up for my family, move your hands. Okay, I'm on like a high falsetto, like I need to relax, have a show tonight, like I can't be like busting my vocal cords. And the fact that we only have this cheat music which tells you how the tune goes, but that we pretty much got it right. No, that was very impressive. Amateurs. Thank I, you, Music Theory. Thank you, Mrs. Thank Lee. Thank you, Mrs. Lee, for those torturous music theory classes that we had used to have to th sit through on Sundays once a week because we were closed on Sundays. Yes, exactly. <laughs> wow, what a great year for us. Like those are two, three moments like I can be proud of. Yeah, it's been a really great year for the Toast. I'm so excited for next year for the Toast. Me too. Like there's so many, and I hate when people announce special projects projects and we're not going to announce special projects but there is just like so much in store for everyone like yeah. when when we come back like you are just going to be you're not going to believe like how much we've changed you know uh, yeah I think it's going to be our a, best year yet it's going to be our best year yet and we just like love the toasters and everyone who listens to the podcast etc and the people who watch on YouTube every day and like pop off in these comments like you Thank guys you. Are, you are just the best and like we love, we love the toast, we love doing this, and we look forward to making it better and better in the next year. Living the dream, you guys. Living the motherfucking dream. Living the dream. Okay, so then I also gave you a little bit of homework. You did. Because we're not done recapping this year. Um, I wanted to hear from you, because I read some, like, IndieWire, um, or I don't know what publication it was, where they were, like, they had everyone in their office do, like, the 50 best albums of the year. It okay. Was fucking trash. So I wanted to hear from you what you thought, what your top five songs of the year are and your top songs. five albums. I have my list as well. Okay, you go first with songs. Okay, my number one song of the year was my number one played on my Spotify and I think it just like, it shaped my year and also I was realizing because I was thinking back on my year, it got me to spend like a lot more money this year. On like concerts, merch, like? No, the song Seven Rings by Ariana Grande. Oh. Just like gave me some sort of attitude and mentality that like I need to go buy seven Cartier rings and like I right. see it, I like it, I want it, I got it. Um, that I, song just like shaped my year. I li was my number one song that I listened to and I think it's the, most, the best song and it just like really made me want to shop. And I did and I need to stop. Okay, Seven Rings. Second song of the year for me, Beer Never Broke My Heart. It's thousand percent. like the best country song of the year, perhaps of the decade, and I suffered serious neck injuries because of it. Okay. Third song of the year for me, Old Town Road. Okay. It's obviously everyone's song of the year. Um, I fucking love that song. I love the Mason Ramsey uh, remix and the Diplo remix, and I just love what it did for, for the country and the okay. world. Yeah. Fourth, random ass song, but um, I love it, and whatever. On a Roll by Ashley O. I'm on a roll. By the way, you don't have to justify your answers. You no, know? but it's like they're kind of random. And these weren't even the top five that I played the most. But I just like, I love this song. I love that it came from an episode of Black Mirror. It gave us old school Hannah Montana. It performed yeah. better than the songs that Miley Cyrus was releasing at the time. Even though these were supposed to be like cheesy versions of yeah. songs, you know? And it's like, no, cheesy. the cheesier the better, you guys. Agreed. And my fifth song that I loved this year was Even Though I'm Leaving by Luke Holmes. Because it just got me in my feelings. And yep. I love Luke Holmes. And it was a... It was a great song. Okay, that's those were really good. And you know what? Mine are similar. I think maybe I have one or two crossovers. So Right. And also like obviously my number one song of life of my of my decade of my year of our Community is Toast by Claudia Atre. Of course. Okay. Um, but that goes without saying. I would think it would be unfair for me to put that song in with other artists just because like I'm such a supreme talent to like all these people that obviously that is the song of our of our century. Like yeah. I don't need to address that. Um, but my top five songs come from my Spotify, but also just like the way that I felt this year. Um, the first song is so random and I didn't even realize how much I'd listened to it until it was literally the number one on my Spotify and I was like, damn, I don't even like associate with this song. But then the more I listened to it, like, I just think it's A, the best, most like funnily written song ever, but like also so beautiful. Tequila Again by Brothers Osborne. Okay. Like the That's whole- That's your number one song? Literally my number one song. And I, it's obviously because I'm always in the mood just to listen to it. Like it's, it's country, but it's also like kind of alternative. And the lyrics are just like so interesting how- the whole time you think he's talking about a girl, but at the end of the day, he's talking about how he's falling in love with tequila again. It's just, and it's also like, so me. Um, then on an emotional side, uh, the Lauren Daigle song uh, that took the world by storm that's called- um, Believe? No. You Rescue. say I am lost when I am falling on. You know that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's it called? I Believe. Oh, I Believe, yeah. Yeah. Totally impacted me in a positive way. Like love that it. voice. And then I found Lauren Daigle, and like now I listen to a lot of her music, and I just think she's a supreme talent. Um, 
then um, the whole album really impacted me, Andy Grammer's album, but um, I don't know why I'm like forgetting just the names sing, of all the like, songs. Oh, just sing it, sure. I found cynicism, I found criticism, I I've found been you. the corner performer and I have filmed the villain, I've got more than a heart could take. Beautiful. Um, I found you. I found you. Obviously, Bear Never Broke My Heart. I love what that song did, like, for my neck, but also, like, what it did for me and my sisters. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. the bond yeah. was was real. Oh, shit. I forgot a song on my list. What? I fucked up. Um, and I'm going to put it in place of On a Roll by Ashley O. Hallelujah Nights by Lanco. That was my song of the year. <gasps> yeah, it was. How was that not on my number one? You know what? It's probably Do you listen to it a lot? I do. Um, but also, I only want to listen to it when I'm in, like, a, when I'm having a Hallelujah Night. Sorry, the Lauren Daigle song is called You Say. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, and by the way, the, the cool thing about having a Hallelujah Night is that it doesn't happen often, so it actually makes a lot of sense that you wouldn't have listened to Hallelujah Nights a lot because it's a rare occurrence. Yes, it's like I can't just listen to it every time I get ready in the morning. Like, that's not a fucking Hallelujah Night. Then the, fu the fifth and final song for me is a song that wasn't released this year but was re-released by a different artist, and it was Ariana Grande's version of The Wizard and I. Like, I have watched that video on YouTube so many motherfucking times, and then when they released it on Spotify, like, it's all I do. I put a TikTok of myself singing it, like, online. Like, I just think, I, first of all, I love that song, and I just love all the Wicked soundtrack. I love Ariana Grande being her musical theater self, and her rendition is just as amazing, if not better than the original. So I absolutely adore that song this year. And it was in my top Spotify. Absolutely adore. And so we have one song in common that makes it the Toast song of the year, aside from Toast, and that's Beer, Beer Never, Never Broke, Broke My Heart. Heart. And, and I feel really good about that. No, I could have guessed that. You yes. Know? Okay. And now top five albums of the year. Okay. I'm going to give you mine. My number one album of the year, album that I listen to the most, according to Spotify, and that I just love everything about is Naive by Andy Grammer. Oh, I completely agree. Like, that was my album of the year. If I were the president of the Grammys, like, that would win album of the year. Yep. My number two is a curveball, but it's so fucking good. And if you like country even a little bit, you need to be listening to it. Wild Blue Part One by Hunter Hayes. Wow, so such random. A, such a good album. Claudia, listen to it on the plane and try not to cry. Okay. Number three for me is Taylor Swift Lover. Wow, number three. Number three. Number four, Jesus is King by Kanye. Yep. I actually don't know if I put these in an order of importance. And number five is, just came in at the last minute, Lady Antebellum Ocean, most beautiful fucking album of all time. Okay, that's really beautiful. For me, obviously, Lover was my number one album. Like, the fact that we got 18 songs from Taylor Swift this year, like, I'm good for another, like, six months. Like, I'm <laughs> I'm good. And then The Christmas Tree Farm, which, by the way, the more I listen to, I realize is literally the best song ever written. Did you just see her perform it at Jingle Ball uh, Capital FM? It's literally the most, it's better live. Okay, I have to check it out. Um, that's becoming my favorite Taylor Swift song of all time. Jackie, the bridge is it's, so good with the core, I mean, with, with the choir. It's like, I don't have any musical talent, like nothing, but it's like, if I did, that's the song I would write. Yeah, and you would be there too. Under the mistletoe. It's so good. I'm so glad you like it. Um, my second album of the year is Beer Never Broke My Heart, Luke Holmes. Like, also, 17 songs. Like, living for a long album, thank you so much. Um, the third is, like, a lesser-known artist, and it's technically an EP. It's um, Toast by Claudia Astre. Like, I, sorry, I just had to put myself in there. Um, and, and I wasn't sure, was Girl by Maren Morris released yes. this year? Yeah. Okay, my fourth is Girl by Maren Morris. It was one of the first albums that came out this year, so it was, like, the first album this year that I got to, like, live with. Uh -huh. And I just thought it was incredible. Like, yeah. so... So diverse. Like, I don't even know if I would call it country. No, like, no. It's really cross-genre. And it was and released. And everyone loves it. Like, my friends who don't love country music love it. Right. And that one, the one song on there that I, like, love the most is obviously the most country is a collab with the guy from um, Brothers Osborne, All My Favorite People. It's like, that song will never not make me just want to get up and, like, spend all my money on my gas and, and marijuana. You know what yeah. I mean? And then my fifth of the year... Uh, Oh, is um, so random, but I actually like really like loved this album, and I didn't really listen to it so much when it came out. But I've just like slowly been listening to all the songs, and they're all kind of bangers. Is "Sucker" by Jonas Brothers? Okay, cool. Yeah, good because that was on a lot of top album of the year lists. Yeah, and it's just like I never expected that for myself, but I really identified with the music. Love it. I also want to give some honorable mentions. Obviously, Lizzo was a huge part. Yes, of Yes, she year, was on my list. But too. I had a hard time choosing just one song of hers, you know, so that's why I didn't make it to my top five. Also. Um, one of my favorite songs this year was from Songland. And yeah, which one? Young, the Old, uh, yeah. Old Dominion. Yeah, so check it out if you haven't. 
Um, that just makes me want to go and listen to music, but we can't go do that because we need to recap everything on Bravo last night. Let's take it from the top because you've got a flight to catch. Our recaps are brought to you by Scentbird. Did you know that scent is the most powerful sense you have? A smell can bring on a flood of memories, influence your mood, and of course enhance your natural style. But while you're looking for that signature scent that will make you stand out and keep the memory of you lingering on, why waste so much time and money with cheap knockoffs and half-empty bottles of failed experiments? With Scentbird, you can have great taste and mix up your fragrance routine with, uh, without breaking the bank. Whether it's Tom Ford, Gu Gucci, or Versace, <laughs> Scentbird.com keeps you smelling good month after month. Um, I have personally tried a Gucci perfume, a Malin Goats perfume, tons of different perfumes because I've now been subscribed for over a year. Um, and I just really like mixing up my fragrance routine, trying ones I haven't used before, and also not spending a lot of money in case I don't like love something. Love that. Scentbird is a luxury fragrance subscription service for perfumes and colognes. They have more than 600 designer brands for you to choose from every month. Choose the perfume you want to try. They'll send you a 30-day supply. If you're not sure what type of scent you're looking for, you can sort and find new fragrances by brand, style, occasion, season, and more. Plus, they have products from other categories like skincare, wellness, and makeup. They carry brands like Kopari, which is a favorite here at the Morning Toast, Glam Glow, and Glow Recipe. We have an exclusive offer for our listeners. You can get 30% off your first month today. That's only $10 for your first fragrance. Go to scentbird.com slash Steen, our offer has changed, so make sure you're listening. Scentbird.com slash Steen, or use the code Steen for your first month, 30% um, off. Again, that's S-C-E-N-T-B-I-R-D.com slash Steen, um, or you can just use the code S-T-E-E-N for your first perfume or cologne for just $10. For the last time this year, sign, sign on, on smell, smell amazing. amazing. Okay, bravo recap. First, we started with the Easter episode of New Jersey, which was incredibly sad and incredibly separate. I don't remember a recent episode of Housewives where everyone was like, no one was together at all. It's because we went from Jamaica to back home. and it so, was just For the like, holidays. Yeah, we were just fragmented. I didn't mind it. Did you cry? Of course, when Nono started That's to cry. That's when I started to cry, too. Oh, my God, how could, how could anyone not cry? No, I really don't think there was a dry eye in the country. And he started crying when Teresa was saying grace and addressing his wife, their, her grandma. Oh, my God, it just set me off. Except, like, I, I went, Nono is such a roller coaster of emotion because him drinking the hot sauce from the fridge, when he started drinking, I'm like, damn, that looks like hot sauce. And then they zoomed in, and it was like, yes, it is. In fact, hot sauce, so funny. And then he goes from making us laugh to making us cry. Like, I just, I, I, like, when I, you know, lay my head on my pillow at night and I pray for things, like, I pray for health and wellness for Nono because, like, he's such an important figure, figure in the family. And he's finally now alive to see his family getting along so beautifully. That's also why I was crying. It's like, these people have been through, like, the worst of the worst in the most public ways. And it's so terrible that it took, like, this tragedy, like, to bring them together. But, like, now it's, like, they're thick as thieves. Like, nothing could ever tear them apart. Like, Melissa, the way, like, Joey Gorga has, like, stepped up for these kids, like, I couldn't stop crying. Like, when he got on the phone with Joe and he was crying, like, he is such a role model for, like, all the kids in the family. And he's really, like, stepped up. And he's there every day taking them to school, cooking. Like, he does everything. And, like, I just, like, stand Joey Gorga to the highest degree. To the highest degree. Like, and I stand Melissa and Joe. And they're just doing everything right. Also, like, seeing um, Antonia and her cousins, like, they're literally all sisters. It's the sweetest thing. I was crying. It was it was just, like, too, it was too much. And and Joe, I mean, we know eventually he goes back to Italy, but, like, he needs to fucking go. He needs to get yeah. out of that that ice. And I don't know if, and I'm not a mom and it's not my business, but I don't know if Teresa not telling Adriana was the right move because kids know stuff. And, like, she's talking about it right in front of her. Like, she knows. Yeah. And it's, I guess she's tall for her age because she feels a lot older than they're Bitch. treating her. Also, she looks like like Gabriella. Yeah. And I get them confused because they're twins. G and Melania are spitting images of each other and Melania and Adriana and Gabriella are twins. Yeah. It's crazy. It is crazy, but they're really such an amazing family. And again, Gia just being like the pinnacle of strength. Always. But, Always. But pinnacle strength, but also like so sensitive, emotional, and in touch with her feelings. But only but, around her mom. She won't let yeah, the, but, the younger siblings right, see but her cry. Also so in control. Um, everyone else's uh, Thanksgivings were pretty much irrelevant because not Thanksgiving Easter were irrelevant because like right. all I cared like, about. I thought the big conversation was going to be like Dolores, David, and Frank, and it's like I wasn't even paying attention because I was wiping my tears away. Um, obviously, hold on. I actually wrote down notes from last night's because there was so much. Um, oh, I did not know that Jennifer had a brother who was gay, and I thought she handled that conversation very well because it's obviously like. Uh, a tumultuous thing in their family, seeing as how the mom won't even address the fact that her son is gay. Um, and I thought it was really cool how she handled the question. Like, her daughter was just like, Mommy's uncle, whatever his name is, gay. And she's like, yeah, doesn't yeah. matter. Like, I just thought, like, I can't believe they captured that moment on television because it was obviously the first time, like, she ever noticed that he might be gay. And it's, like, not a big deal. And I thought it was so cute how he was teaching them piano lessons and how musical theater was, like, his safe space growing up. And I just, like, 
every day, like Stan Jennifer more and more. No, we have no we have no choice. Even if I had a choice, which we don't, which we don't, but we have no choice but to stand. I want to talk about the only thing I wrote down that I wanted to talk about was like Danielle's house situation. Yeah, and how and she's I, having Oliver co-sign the two million dollar loan. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Has he never seen the show? Also, like, wasn't she engaged to be a duchess and now she's, like, having sex with Marty again? Like, Jackie, Oliver is the duchess guy. No, I know. Okay. So, like, why is she saying maybe she'll get back together with Marty when, like, you can go be Meghan Markle in Sussex? Right, no, she is now, like, into the idea of having a $2 million house in New Jersey when she could also have, like, a palace in Versailles and a private jet. What? It makes no sense. She, by the way, and you know what? She is, like, such a monster and she keeps getting these, like, amazing guys and, like, she is one of those women that you hear about who has, like, a magical vagina. No, I know. It's like in the movie um, that I just made you watch, Bachelorette, when Isla Fisher's like, have you heard of a magical vagina? She, Danielle Stab has a magical one. Um, what does that entail? Having a magical vagina? Yes. I, no. I have no idea. Like, I just need to know this spell. How she gets people to like do whatever. And actually, and I totally thought that she was lying about having sex with Marty, but no, she wasn't. No, she wasn't. I need like to take life lessons. I need a master class from Danielle Staub on like how to have a magical vagina. No, same because like honestly, like that should be her next product because it's clear they're never gonna make her a full-time housewife. Like no. it's just not in the cards for her. She needs to be like a life coach. Even though next next episode I think is the finale, she and Margaret like get into it physically. Yeah. But Margaret did start it. But Danielle took it to another. No, Actually, um, Margaret started it. Yeah. She put a whole bottle of water on her head. Yeah. That's not okay. No. Well, we'll judge when we see it. Um, and then one more thing I wanted to talk about, which I didn't really like care for the conversation being had at Jackie's house with her dad. But what I found to be the most fascinating that I don't know if anyone picked up on is when they were playing the home videos and she was getting into the car at her junior prom, you could see the cul-de-sac she grew up on and it was literally mega mansions. Like, I've never seen such big houses in my life. No, but it's also the same house that her dad is in right now. No, it can't be. I'm pretty sure that it was. It was the same staircase outside, like... The same situation. Also, that house is straight out of the 70s. That's true, but I was thinking, like, where did this bitch grow up? Because literally the cul-de-sac, like... Manalapan. I saw two houses that were mega mansions. Really? I yeah. didn't see... I didn't... I, my investigation ended when she walked down the stairs, but that's when yours started. Yeah, no, I didn't notice how they might even have been the same house, but I guess that would make no, sense. like that couch that they were sitting on in that kitchen, like that yeah. is... Yeah, so not, 70s. That's not a new house. Um, also, like, I'm no one to judge, you know, other people's situations, but, like, it is kind of odd that our parents live in separate houses. Like, if you want to be in the same house and live in separate rooms, like, I kind of get that, but, like, separate houses, no, like, beyond, call, us, call a spade a spade. You're divorced. It's beyond strange. Yeah, okay, but, I'm glad but, but honestly, if it works for them, yeah. cool. And... Um, nothing else really happened in the episode. Margaret sat down with Marty, found out they did in fact have sex. Marty's like such a weirdo and the fact that they can like all hang out when he said such mean things about Margaret and then like your husband's in the pool is weird. Sort of, but the way that Margaret explains it, like right after that happened, he called and apologized and that's more than Dingnail's ever done. That's you know? true. Um, okay, let's get into Dallas because that was like really the meat and potatoes of the whole night. Mm -hmm. Um, here are the things that I wrote down. Okay, on the count of three, let's say who the star of last night's episode was, Okay. Yeah. Three, two, one. Cameron. Court Westcott. Oh, of course. The star. The Westcotts. The Westcotts. Okay, here, I wrote down everything that I thought he was so great at. One, he gave great advice. Before the party, sitting on the bed, being like, you have to tell Cameron. He was very eloquent. I just thought he was giving Cameron the best advice for Cameron, because that's the only thing he cares about. And I thought he was, like, really sweet, and not, like, a lot of these husbands, like, brush off this drama. Like, no, he was actually invested. Um, then in the car, when she was being, Cameron was being, like, so slow to get out, like, the actual thing, and he's like, he that's said, not all. That's not the whole story. Yeah. Like, come on. Love that. And then he was the one who took the picture at the end. Like, I just... Oh, my God. He was so cute. And when he came over and got Cameron and was like... Rachel from Rachel. whatever and wants to like, talk to you. she's like, Rachel? He's like, there's no Rachel. No, by the way. And he's right. Like, I... Dallas is very society driven and Cameron is the heart of the society and honestly like Leanne had a bad reputation before but not based off of anything like really substantial like now you have to go like get away from her like yeah. she's toxic yeah and Cameron did like what she needed to do she said her piece and she really went toe to toe with Leanne and she was like I'm not scared of you you, you should be scared, scared of me. me and she didn't mean that in the way like I'm gonna bite you or hit you it meant like I am everything in this town and yeah. you are nothing right and like even though sometimes I might act like Silly. I'm in deference to you yep I am aware of how it works. Yeah, I thought she was very headstrong, and I, I know that was hard for her. Like, no, I, and that really confirmed everything that she's always said about herself, where it's like, she pretends to be dumb, but she's actually smart. And I don't even think she pretends to be dumb or that she's smarter than she seems, but it's like, she sees. Yeah. That's how Cameron sees, sees it. it. Another thing I wrote down was that before they went to the party, Carrie um, and her husband went to dinner. and then Every time they sit down to dinner, I get a pit. I'm like, what are we fighting about yeah, today? Yeah, you know what? It was like... 
she had obviously never had this conversation with him that she's been telling the women and telling us in confessionals because he said okay and then they kiss. Like her whole storyline could have just ended the season if they just had a conversation. Right, except they still don't have a house. No, and um, when the producer asked Carrie, do you think you're going to spend the rest of your life with Eduardo? And she gave the funniest answer. She's like, not if he doesn't give me what I want. Like honestly, she's a, a boss, but like I don't know how you go back to having a marriage like after you've said that on public television, you know? Yeah. I don't, I, I respect it. Like I just, I respect people who are honest about their issues and it's so easy to be like we're gonna be together forever but that's not how life works and I think because she's been divorced she like sees that mm-hmm. you know and she's realistic and I, I, I stand. Yeah, no, by the way, love her. Like, she has to come back. I absolutely adore her. Um, I thought her husband's reaction to finding out uh, what Leanne said about her was absolutely hysterical, calling her, um, he said, remember the Alamo? Hilarious. And then let's get into... And that was the name of the episode. Oh, was it? Yeah. It was a great response. Yeah. Um, And then Cameron was like, what's the Alamo? (laughs) Um, Let's get into the actual meat and potatoes, because Cameron was the one who started... You're loving meat and potatoes Because you know what? It's, um, It's really the only pertinent phrase. Yeah. So, Cameron starts the whole thing. She takes uh, Leanne down and basically just gave her a warning. She was like, I just want to let you know, like, what you said was not okay, and I told Carrie. And I'm glad that she did and that Leanne didn't get, like, said, like, Leanne got to fully be faced with her with her charges. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Carrie came over. It was all, like, a great um, timeline. It's almost like it was planned by the producers, you know? Like, yeah. And then Carrie came over, and I thought Carrie was so poised. And honestly, like, if someone, I had found that someone, like, had said that about me, even if I didn't like the person, like, I would probably start crying. Like, just calling me, like, a Jew. Jew, Jew, Jew. Like, it's obviously derogatory. Like, to state someone's nationality when it's completely irrelevant, like, is derogatory. Like, no matter how you slice it. Right. I know. And to state someone's nationality in a derogatory way right. is it's derogatory. Just, even if she said that Mexican, like, that's still bad. Watching it over and over again, it just, like... Which, which do you think, not that they're all bad, but which do you think was the worst thing she said? Ooh, um, I mean, I guess chirping Mexican. I thought it was worse when she was in that dark corridor with Stephanie and she slapped herself in the face. She, Come on, Mexican, that, you're all strong. Oh, man. That was... That's the worst one because it's so cringy. When Cameron was trying to imitate Leon, she was like, <laughs> she also said that you were big, big strong. strong. Because she literally can't recreate something so uncomfortable. Like, by the way, that was the problem with trying to tell everyone, trying to tell Carrie what Leanne did because you can't rub because she didn't actually say stuff. Like, it was her actions. Like, like Stephanie tried to say, she went like <laughs> She slapped herself in the face. Like, it was just, it's actually hard to reiterate. Yeah, it's and it's hard to rewatch over and over again. And I think all the women handled it in a, in a good way, especially Carrie. She's so strong and, like, composed. And, and it was, like, no matter what, what was said in Thailand, I feel like there was, like, some people on Carrie's side, Deandra, Leanne, whatever. It's, like, it's game over. Like, she completely crossed the line. It was so disrespectful. And then her reaction to it, her first reaction was not Deny. Good. Deny. Her second reaction of own and not apologize wasn't good. Her third reaction of apologize, but like qualify the apology and still not see how what you said was offensive. It's it's not good. No, it was so bad. And then she left and they kind of positioned the, um, the, the finale, like all the women without her, it gave me like Lisa Vanderpump vibes. Like the vibe was so much better without her. When, yeah, when they just took that picture. And yeah, and it really feel like they were setting it up for her not being there next season. And I, I honestly don't think that they can. I think that, I don't know what happens at the reunion. I think that Bravo's gonna wait to see what the fans want. Yeah, I, I think it, her time might be up. Yeah. Even though like, just from a, a straight like, perspective of like the show like Leanne does every season like be the center of the drama like I don't know what we would actually do without her but I do think like Bravo has to take some sort of stand like that there has to be a line in Housewives in Atlanta it was drawn with Phaedra I do think this has to be a line also um based on like what Leanne's been tweeting or posting to Instagram it doesn't seem like she's taking it very seriously or that she's like sorry so it she's just brushing it off she's like obviously I'm not racist so it doesn't bode well yeah I don't think she has handles it well at the reunion yeah speaking of reunions we got the OC reunion where like they acted like Vicky was a secondary cast member meanwhile she's on for the whole thing right I understood why she was getting fed up but she was acting just like so entitled it she was, was annoying a- being she- rude to everyone who she works with no no that is so not okay like no matter how you feel you're annoyed whatever like this is your job and like, you can't just be so rude to production like these are people. They're not like your slaves. Yeah. She was being so rude. Um, and, it's, and even yelling at Andy, I'll be very upset. Like, right before they went live. Like, out of control. Nuts. Like, that's not how a human being acts. And then kept saying, this is my show, my show. Like, do you have any self-awareness? You're not even a full-time cast member anymore. This is literally more Broadwind's show than it is your show. Yeah. 
She fucking hates Bronwyn. Even on Watch Drama's Live, she cannot stop saying mean things about her. Honestly, the reunion was just a mess. 500 conversations going on at once. Kelly and Tamara couldn't stop fighting. And then in the middle of real conversations being had. Yeah. Dumb, it, dumb, dumb. It's because they start off with the small fights. They build to the bigger fights. We'll get the Kelly, Shannon, Tamara fight next week. But it's like until that is addressed, it comes up in every other fight. And it's almost like they should just start with it. To by the way, it's so true. It's like silly because they're... They try to go chronologically, but they end up working backwards. Yeah, also, like, our girls, Emily and Gina, like, they were breaking my heart for a second. Breaking my heart, but I like that at the end of the day, like... They love each other. They love each other, and it's like, that is a real friendship, and I have a lot of hope for them. So, like, I was getting really disheartened seeing, like, well, I guess that's where our friendship is right now. But then, obviously, she got up and gave her a hug. Like, I thought it was great. I, this is what I wrote down. Bronwyn looks so different. Do you notice, like, I don't know, what, maybe she's only parting her hair in the middle for the first time, but she looks like a completely different person. She has a completely new hair spot right now. I love it. It's just like a sleek blowout. I thought she looked great. Me too. I, I don't know why it looks so different. Emily had a walker because she did get her hip surgery. Very pertinent this week. Walkers. Her and Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, sorry, Harvey Weinstein. Um, so Emily and Gina got into a fight again about Vegas. Um, I really just feel like they both are, are right and wrong in every situation, except for the cousin thing. Like, I will t die on the hill of, like, Gina's so out of control, like, assuming the worst in Emily that she would set her up on a date with someone who had a girlfriend. Um, I don't think she assumed the worst. I think it's, like, you didn't even care to do the bare minimum of research to find out the one thing that this guy needs to have in order to go on a date with me. But I feel like that research is, like, hey, want to go on a date with my friend? Sure. He would have said no if he had a girlfriend. Like, that's just common knowledge. I guess. It just puts Gina in, like, a city situation when she's terrible. fragile. Terrible, terrible, terrible. But, terrible. Like, but, but assume, something like that is, like... But to be like, I don't believe you. Like, to assume the worst, like, right. shut the fuck no, up. But that was... Right, but, like, that was Tamara not believing Gina. But I Tamara mean, was getting in Gina's Emily. head. But also, yes, and when Gina was upset about it, she didn't say anything to Emily, which I actually really, when I'm mad at you, I don't want to talk to you. Like, I don't right. want to ask what happened. I just want to be mad. Right. And until she talked to her and understood her side, they couldn't get over it. Yeah, it was just like Emily and Gina's friendship was already so fragile, and Emily went out and tried to do a nice thing, and I believe 100% she had good intentions. Like, it just ended up being, like, another thing that, like, was making more distance between them and throwing Gina even more into Tamara's arms, which obviously made Emily insecure. Like, I felt really bad. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to discuss was this Jane Roe lawsuit. Fucking hilarious. Hilarious. Vicky's out of control. And so is Kelly. Um, and I feel like all the women on the couch are like, Kelly, you're being crazy. But like, no one is addressing how Vicky was being just as crazy as Kelly last night. Yeah. Also, was Kelly being that crazy? Everyone was being crazy. Walmart and Sam's Club was so funny. Yeah. That was, yeah. I don't even fucking know. I, I can't judge the Kelly situation until next week, until I see what's what. Is this a two-part or a three-part reunion? I think three. Oh, uh, yeah, Monday and Thursday of next week. It's on. That is so weird that they're just like shoving these episodes out. Like they can't wait to get the season over. Yeah, it is weird. Very strange. But then when we come back, we have Vanderpump Rules. Wow. And Randall Emmett's on the cast. Dead. And they have the wedding. I wonder if I'll be in the background like for a second. Oh my God, that would be so exciting. Honestly, I hope not because I ended up feeling so bad in that dress. No, I'm sure you looked beautiful. Yeah, I did. Um, before we wrap up, I just want to say everything we're thankful for this year. And it starts with Y-O-U. Yes, what a great year to be a toaster. What a great year to be a host of The Morning Toast. We can't thank you guys enough for making this show what it is. We have had so much fun mm -hmm. um, living the dream. Like, I can't believe that this is our job. Um, and thank you guys for just continuing to support The Toast, support everything we do from the merch to the Patreon to live events. We can't wait to see you all at Camp Toast. Like, this ecosystem only exists because of the people who are in it. And that's you guys. So thank you for- And we see you and we love you. And thank you for being just like a positive light in the treacherous- world of 2019. Hopefully 2020 is a little bit brighter. Yeah. That's for, all we can hope for. That's all we can hope for. We want to thank everyone at our studio who's yes, here. Yes, Vayner Productions. Thanks we for love you guys. Out. We want to thank everyone that works on our show. Audio our, Boom. Audio Boom. Our agents. At William everyone Morris, who, Barry Ben, Julia, Marcus. Everyone who deals Gabby, with us on a regular Mike. basis. Um, thank you, Claudia. Oh my God, thank you. Honestly, Thank you, because as much as 2019 was the year of the toast, like I also feel like it was the year of the Dirty Jeans store where I got to like live my dream. And I only got to do that because there was someone back here like holding down the fort, sitting through co-hosts that were like a little rough, taking care of Theo. Like you are literally like my right arm, like and I would die without you and the show would not survive if it wasn't for the tenacity and the hard work of one Miss Jacqueline Ashray. Thank you guys. I This is my dream job. There's nowhere else I'd rather be. Um, let's do a little quick resolution. Do you have any resolutions? No, I find those resolutions to be like the lamest thing ever. Except that we said early in the episode like some things we wanted to do better next year. Yeah, no, I want to um, control my temper and um, 
Yeah, I really feel like I'm a perfect. Like, I'm in love with myself. I think I'm so smart, funny, cool, and, like, who wouldn't want to be my friend? So, honestly, resolutions are for broken people, and I'm not broken. No, I'm totally kidding. It's good for you for trying to better yourself. Honestly, I just don't have enough time, and I feel like I'm, I'm good enough. Yeah, you're learning as you go. Like, you're making yeah. changes every day. Why Gross. only start on January 1st? Right, like, that. that's for people who don't actually want to make changes. I've been making changes every day. Also, want to say a big thank you and that we love you to our TNN family, our yes. ever-growing TNN family. Lots Check of out. big things happening in TNN next year. Yes. There's new episodes of Mood by Lauren Elizabeth, The Snatchler, Date Night with Raven and Adam. Such good stuff. I have to listen to this week's Mood with Lauren Elizabeth because I hear we're spoken about we it. We are. We are. And she actually said she gives us like a really nice like moment. I'm so excited Me to too. listen to it. Um, and that's all she wrote. My sweater is obviously from shopmorningtoast.com. I think this is the, my favorite outfit I've ever worn. I wish it was Christmas because I'm ready to just like... You're so... You're a rockette. No, I'm ready to go down to Radio City. Um, and also, if you are missing us, head over to patreon.com slash morningtoast because starting tomorrow and every other for the next five work days at 10.30 a.m., there will be new podcast episodes of Claudia and I really going through everything yeah. so there's so much stuff I feel like we like you and I we've done five podcasts this week and it's just I know everything about you sis uh, right and it's like there's so much we talked about this week that we didn't talk about in this show so it's like <clears throat> we're referencing stuff totally so if you miss us patreon.com slash the morning toast also a great gift to give shopmorningtoast.com for great gifts stocking stuffers stockings themselves and for the last time in 2019 thank you so much for listening to the morning toast the millennial morning show where we go live Monday through Friday 10 30 a.m. Eastern time on YouTube so if you're watching us on YouTube please feel free to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and write a comment about how beautiful, stunning, and smart we are. We are also available as a podcast pretty much anywhere podcasts can be found. So that's iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, CastBox. So wherever you listen to podcasts, please subscribe, give us a five-star review, and feel free to leave a review about, like, I don't know, how genius we are and how this show is literally the greatest thing since sliced bread. It's up to you. Take creative control. We love you guys so much. Have an amazing new year. Happy holidays. Don't drink and drive. And try not to kill your families while you see them for Christmas. Bye. And if you feel like you're going to, just put on an episode of The Morning Toast. Mwah.